Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. This past week I attended an orchid meeting of one of the local orchid societies here in the Midwest and some of the things that were said at the meeting put me on edge a little bit and I want to explain to you what was said and why I responded in a certain way. I didn't say anything at the meeting, I was polite, I kept my mouth shut. Um, but this was relating to orchid fertilizers and what specifically was brought up was the MSU orchid fertilizer. Now what I want to do is just first state that the MSU fertilizer that a lot of people do use for their orchids wasn't developed for orchids. It's not really an orchid fertilizer, uh, but it's been um, sold like that. And because of that, it's really expensive, but it's really not that much. It is a good fertilizer, but it's not that much different from the other fertilizers, fertilizers that are out there. And there may be some orchid fertilizers that are just as good, if not better, than the MSU orchid fertilizer that was presented at this meeting. Um, so first of all, um, there's, a, there's another story. I'm going to get sidetracked a little bit. There's another story that I want to tell you about MSU. So MSU stands for Michigan State University. And that is not my former university that, that um, I was associated with. But it is a, um, a close university and and I have and it, it's kind of a, a partner institution I have a lot of colleagues at Michigan State University uh, the people there are very good and I actually had in my laboratory a really good student who received her undergraduate degree at Michigan State University before she came to my laboratory at a different university also in the Midwest U.S. So uh, I want to tell you a little bit about, about that story and that individual and that student. Let's just say for the sake of this video that the student's name was Katie. And, and Katie is, she was and is really bright. She was a great student she was really smart and when I first recruited her into my laboratory, um, I followed up, she visited my lab, I followed up, called her and talked with her trying to get her into my laboratory and I was surprised <laughs> that she accepted an appointment in my laboratory as a, uh, as a graduate student. And, and the reason I was surprised is she was smart, she could have gone anywhere uh, but she decided to come to my laboratory, which was really great for me. Uh, I think she fared pretty well, too, in, in, in that environment. Uh, but the story with, with Katie, so what happened is uh, my university and Michigan State University, they, they used to be really strong football rivals, and this is American football. So, um, and, and a few years ago, many years ago, um, my university was, they were, they were good. Actually, we were, still are good. Um, and we, we were, had a great season, the football team, everyone was talking about them. Uh, Michigan State University also had a good team, not supposed to be not quite as good as my university. And they played at they played the football game at my university. Um, my former university, is, there's a huge football stadium. And at the time, I think it held 102,000 people. I think right now, there may be up to 105 or 107,000. So it's a big pet place, lots of screaming going on, lots of people. It's a fun thing to do. So I went to the game uh, with my university versus MSU, and Katie went to the same game. So 102,000 people, and what happened, it was a good game, it was tight, everything was, was going well, but my university lost. And what it did that year was it destroyed the chances of my university competing for a national championship title. You know, and I'm used to that. I'm used to some disappointments, and I was a little bit upset and discouraged after that loss, but it happens. I've always been associated with big football schools in graduate school and then as a faculty member at my university. And, and you, you kind of get used to having a great team and these disappointments that come along with it many years. Not all years, but many years. At the end of the game, again, 102,000 people. At the end of the game, 102,000 people are exiting the stadium, and I was walking over the bridge to get to my car, and I hear a young lady's voice behind me saying, hey, 
excuse me, hey, did, did, you, did you like the game? And I looked behind me, and out of 102,000 people, <laughs> Katie was behind me with her parents. And, and we talked, and it was fun, but I was, I, you know, again, I was a little upset, a little disappointed, but I'm used to it, so it was fine. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's just kind of a, it's just an interesting story that out of all those people, she was right there behind me. I didn't want to talk to her at, at that time. I was going to see her in the laboratory on Monday, but it was, it was fine. I got to meet her parents, too. Anyway, um, so... That, you know, that year, Michigan State University destroyed my university's chances of the nas national championship. Um, but again, it happens. I have no animosity to MSU. I still have good colleagues that are there. It's a good school. <laughs> they, make, they make good fertilizers. Okay, back to the original story. So let's talk a little bit more about the MSU Magic Orchid Fertilizer, which is it really that magic and really wasn't developed for orchids? So there's a number of articles that were written by the developers of the MSU fertilizer. And what I'd like to share with you today is, is some content of one of the articles that was written by um, Bill Argo. And Bill is, he, he, was, he was at Michigan State University, and now he's with uh, Blackmore Company, which is actually a fertilizer company. And, and these guys and his colleagues developed two different formula, formulations for Michigan State University for the fer fertilizer that they were using to fertilize the plants that were in their floriculture greenhouses. So they, this was developed not for orchids, but for things like petunias and geraniums and, and other floricultural crops that were grown in the greenhouses. And again, there's a great you know, horticulture program at Michigan State University. And these, the people that develop this are fertilizer people. So they really understand a lot about how uh, pH influences uh, the availability of nutrients and what nutrients are available and what type of water that you use in your fertilizer actually influences which fertilizer formulations that you use. So two different fertilizer formulations. One was developed for uh, reverse osmosis water or distilled water or deionized water, very pure water. And that has, they added a lot of the really uh, the micronutrients that were present that were needed by plants at very low levels. The other fertilizer solution was developed for well water that may contain, and the well water from the ground, may contain low levels of some of those nutrients. So maybe different pH things, maybe uh, other, other nutrients. So there's different, there are two different fertilizer formulations that were developed. And now I think what's happened is a lot of people have even made additional changes to these for fertilizer formulations. But originally, two different fertilizer formulations were developed, and they were developed for these, uh, for the other floricultural crops that are grown in the soilless mix that most crops are grown in in these greenhouse and in the floriculture environment. All right, so there's a, but there's a huge difference, as you might imagine, between the medium that's used for orchids and the medium that's used for growing. Um, you know, these other floricultural crops. So, you know, there, there's, um, and, and that impacts, that can impact what fertilizer you use. So again, you need to keep this in mind when you are paying double or four times the price for the MSU fertilizer compared to these other available fertilizers that you can use that are, that are very, very similar. Um, you know, it's not an orchid fertilizer. It wasn't developed for orchids. It is a good fertilizer. Uh, but just, again, keep that in mind if you're willing to pay that much higher price for it. Okay, so um, let me also tell you that I, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not a fertilizer person, but I am, I do, I'm a media development person for flasking. So I do develop, and I'm currently developing medium, actually a few different media for replating of my orchid seedlings. And the interesting thing about that that's relating to this MSU story is that my medium formulation that I'm using for orchids is a variation of a formula that I developed 
for soybeans, which is the main thing that I worked on in my former university laboratory. So I took the, again, the basic formulation of the soybean medium, and there was a few salts and a few components that were modified, and then I changed it a little bit for the orchids um, that I'm working on, and it turns out it's working pretty well. I'm still optimizing my orchid flasking media, but it's a, it's a similar type story, but I've modified it sufficiently for orchids and I'm optimizing it specifically for orchids, which was not done with the MSU formulation. They developed it for these other crops and they used it for these other crops and no changes in formulation occurred before it's, it was applied to the use on orchids. All right, how do I know this? Well, there were, and these articles are written uh, by Bill, by Bill Argo. There's some, uh, you know, there's some questions and answers in there. How is this fertilizer developed, and what's what are the tricks to it? What's going on with it? And one of the questions from this article that I need to read is: It says, "What is MSU magic fertilizer?" And the response is: There is nothing magic about the fertilizer being used um, by. Jan Sirin at Michigan State University, John uh, Birnbaum from MSU, Larry Metcalf, and I. So they designed, again, in this article says, two fertilizer formulas to be used to types of irrigation water found in MSU research in teaching greenhouses. And then what he goes into is, again, the, uh, the formula for, uh, for pure water. Uh, which is the reverse osmosis type water is different from what is used from uh, the well water. Um, when you look at the end of the answer to that question, um, I want to read again from that. And, and it says, it is important to note that these formulas were not designed for orchids in mind. In fact, they were not designed with any specific crop in mind. The reason that they have worked well for orchids is the same reason they work well for a large variety of plant species grown in research and teaching greenhouses the formulas complement the specific water qualities both in pH and nutrition. And, and again, you know, so it's, it's a good article, and these guys really know, I mean, that's what they do. The company that, you know, that Bill is with is now a fertilizer company. They know fertilizers. They know what they're doing. But there are other fertilizers available for orchids that were specifically developed for orchids. You know, look on the labels, look on the tags, uh, figure out what's available and use those. Uh, my fertilizer regime is actually a combination. I mix four different components. When I, uh, the same four components that I fertilize with every, every week for my plants. It's also important to understand that, uh, you know, you, you do understand orchids are different from these other plants. So the orchids are epiphytic plants. They grow with their roots naturally, with their roots exposed. And when they are watered, um, the water just kind of drips off of uh, the water in the fertilizer solution just drips off the roots. A little bit of it gets in, but the majority of it, in many cases, just drips right off. When you have orchids in a pot, uh, which is, you know, again, that doesn't occur naturally. We have them in pot. Again, most of the media that you use for growing orchids in pots uh, is very airy and it doesn't absorb too much water. It's just the water in many cases just falls right through. Sphagnum will absorb some of the water. And this is very different from what the floricultural crops are grown in in their typical either soil or soilless mix, where that soil or soilless mix really absorbs a lot of the waters and nutrients and everything else, and that are gradually the plants will take that and take the, those nutrients up. Orchids are not quite like that. So they take up a really a low, a lower amount of, of nutrients. They're a lot slower growing. Um, again, there's a lot of diversity with, uh, with orchids as well as other plants. So you just need to keep this in mind as you're taking care of your orchids and your, your plants. All right, so that's all I really wanted to share with you is just to kind of give you an overview of the Michigan State University uh, fertilizer that many people use for orchids that is not specifically designed for orchids. And there are other fertilizers 
that work much better, certainly as well, or much better than the meeting formula than the fertilizer formulation that most people are using. All right, so that's the end of my story today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it and you want to keep on seeing my videos, it would help me out if you can click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right, again, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it and happy propagating.